We are recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today, we're looking at the full lineup of professional studio monitors from Amphion, which you can also read about in our family of Amphion monitors compared in the November 2022 issue of Recording Magazine. Based in Kuopio, Finland, Amphion was founded by CEO Ansi Huvanen in 1998. The initial Amphion offerings focused on the home hi-fi and audiophile market. But in 2013, Amphion expanded into the professional studio arena. The current Amphion Pro Audio lineup includes five studio monitors. The 112, 115, 118, 215, and 218. Two base extension systems, the FlexBase 25 and the Base 225, plus a pair of power amp options, the Amp 700 and the Amp 400.8. While many modern speaker designs feature sculpted cabinets, active internal power amps, DSP-based tone shaping, and digital conversion, Amphion speakers are a beautiful balance of no-frills simplicity and European elegance. Each model is housed in a classic rectangular MDF cabinet with a gently textured matte black finish. All models in the line feature aluminum low-frequency drivers of varying sizes and a matching 1-inch titanium tweeter. Amphion speakers feature a sealed cabinet design, meaning there are no base ports or venting holes for air and low frequencies to dissipate. Instead, Amphion cabinets feature passive aluminum radiators. Each radiator is located on the rear of the cabinet, directly behind the low-frequency drivers, where it moves perfectly in tandem to disperse and control the low end. Eliminating the problems of a ported design greatly improves the resolution in the critical low-mid frequencies. This also makes Amphion speakers an excellent choice for use close to boundaries and in smaller spaces. One of the most visually striking features of every Amphion monitor is the large white Corian waveguide surrounding the tweeter. The tweeter is recessed into the waveguide, so it sits on the same plane as the bass driver. This results in a super tight time alignment as the sound from both drivers reaches your ear at the exact same time, offering increased accuracy and focus. The large, gently concave waveguide is also designed to offer the listener a very wide sweet spot. Most studio monitors on the market today are active designs, meaning they are equipped with their own internal power amps. Amphion models, however, are passive designs that require the use of an external power amp. Like any passive speaker, they will work with any properly rated power amp of your choice. However, all power amps interact with a passive speaker differently, affecting its output level and tonality. For this reason, Amphion offers its own stereo Amp 700 and the multi-channel Amp 400.8. Both models offer hand-in-glove performance and consistency across the Amphion line. As a passive design, the Amphion speakers have no onboard, analog, or DSP-based equalization or room correction options. Now, let's look closer at each currently available model in the line. There are two available speaker configurations. The one and two prefixes correspond to the number of low-frequency drivers in the cabinet, while the numeric second half denotes the driver size in centimeters. Despite the presence of the matching over-under drivers in the two models, each Amphion cabinet, from smallest to largest, remains a two-way design. Three-way performance can be accomplished by adding one of the company's base models. Please note that the FlexBase 25 and Base 225 are low-frequency extension cabinets. They are not traditional subwoofers. Starting from the smallest to the largest, the Amphion 112 is the smallest model in the family. The petite 10-inch tall 112 features a 4.5-inch aluminum woofer. We reviewed the 112 in the March 2016 issue of Recording Magazine. Our reviewer instantly zeroed in on what I have found to be a hallmark of the Amphion line, their impressive mid-range representation. He also found the combination of the passive radiator and the wide waveguide produced a genuinely usable sweet spot that was marvelously wide and deep. To say that these speakers were forgiving of the room acoustics would be an understatement. The next step up in size is the Amphion 115. The 115 has a five and a quarter inch aluminum woofer and is roughly 12 and a half inches tall. 
I originally reviewed the 115 in our November 2016 issue. By the time I reviewed the 115, I'd been mixing on a pair of the 118 monitors for about a year, and I knew the Amphion sound pretty well. I found the 115 largely retains the clear, honest sound of the highs and upper mids as the 118, but the bass is tighter and punchier. And the bass kicks a bit more on the 115 over its big brother, which is fuller and more diffuse in comparison. The 118 was my entry point into the Amphion world of sound, and ultimately the model that best suited my studio and my personal tastes. The 15-inch tall 118 has a 6.5-inch driver, which is the largest driver used in the studio monitor line. I reviewed the 118 in March of 2015. Sonically, I found the 118 open, full, honest, clear, rich, subtle, and bold all at the same time. Ultimately, I found it easier to describe what the 118 is not rather than what it is. They do not have the modern, ultra-bright studio monitor sound. They do not have gobs of extended, room-rattling low end. Nor do they have scooped, tailored, or exaggerated mids. In essence, they sound as if nothing is exaggerated across the sonic spectrum. I also like that the 118 retains its fullness at low volumes, and as such, they are exceptionally comfortable to mix on for extended periods of time. The 215 is the same depth and width as the 115, but it's just over 20 inches tall and features two five and a quarter inch drivers and radiators. I reviewed the 215 alongside the 115 in the November 2016 issue. As mentioned, while equipped with three speakers, the two series models are still a two-way design. The dual drivers provide a fuller, more focused low-end coverage than the 115 and the 118. I found that the low end of the 215 is laser focused and thumps you square in the chest like a fist. The 215 for me at the time was neck and neck with the 118 as my favorite model in the line. I found it the most unique sounding of the family, more grounded, forward, and centered with a punchy palpable weight. The largest model in the family is the 31 pound 218. The 218 sports a pair of six and a half inch drivers like the 215, its width and depth are the same as the 118, but it's almost 22 inches tall. I reviewed the 218 in our March 2016 issue. Overall, I found the 218 to be sonically similar in tone and overall response to the 118, offering the same wide imaging and sweet spot as its little brother. My favorite part of the dual driver 218 was how it handles low mids and bass frequencies, providing a low end that makes a kick drum thump you comfortably in the chest and makes it sound like you can ride the bass strings. These boxes help nail and seat kicks and bass in a mix with ease, and their mixes translate well to the real world. Now we move on to Amphion's bass extension offerings. The Bass 225 is comprised of a pair of 36 and a quarter inch tall cabinets designed to live underneath your monitors and double as speaker stands. I reviewed the Bass 225 in September of 2021. On the sides of the cabinet, you will find a pair of opposing 10-inch aluminum drivers at the top with matching 10-inch passive radiators on the bottom handling dispersion. On the rear of each is a single twin-pole Neutrik Speak-On connector. This connects to the included Bass Amp 1200, which is purpose-designed to integrate the Bass 225 with your other Amphion speakers. The Bass Amp 1200 pumps out a whopping 700 watts per channel and lives between your audio outputs and main speakers. The controls on the Bass Amp 1200 include an active fourth order crossover with a choice of 40, 60, 80, or 100 Hz crossover points. There's a level control knob and a backlit power button along with a master power switch on the rear. A second backlit button bypasses the system and restores your main monitors to full range. A quarter inch jack on the back of the unit also offers a foot pedal controlled bypass. In use, I found that while the Bass 225 can kick with a mighty force, when set correctly, it turned my 118 monitors into a full-throated, perfectly integrated three-way system. Next, we come to the Flex Bass 25 that, unlike the Dual Bass 225, is a single tower-style unit designed to live between your monitors. This 110-pound box measures 33 inches tall, 
and it breaks from Amphion tradition in that it has a pair of opposing 10-inch aluminum drivers at the top, but it does not use radiators in its design. I reviewed the FlexBase 25 in June of 2019. Like the Base 225, the FlexBase 25 system lives in between your interface and your speakers. The dual 700 watt FlexAmp 1200 connects to the FlexBase 25 with a single speak on connector that receives and sends a stereo signal. A unique aspect of the design is that the coincident speakers in the cabinet are also stereo. You can choose if the low frequency signal is mono, stereo, or pushed even wider to suit your needs and tastes. The FlexAmp 1200 has buttons for power and bypass, which takes the FlexBase 25 out of the system and returns your main monitors to a full range. A crossover knob lets you choose a crossover point between 35Hz and 260Hz. A second knob adjusts the unit's volume level, and you also get a quarter-inch jack for the connection of an external footswitch. Like the Base 225, the FlexBase 25 is more three-way bass extension rather than subwoofer. Yes, it will shake the room, but most of the time, when set moderately, I forgot that the Flex Base 25 was even there. It never felt like the bass was overcooked. It added just the low end I needed to nail my mixes and makes any speaker setup even more flexible. The unique feature of Amphion bass systems is that in addition to increasing the headroom, they also improve mid-range clarity as the most demanding low frequencies are directed to the bass unit. One final Amphion product to quickly mention is the Amp 700. Originally, Amphion offered a selection of multiple power amp choices, including mono and stereo Amp 100 offerings and the Amp 500. These have now been replaced by the Amp 700. We reviewed this 700 watt beast in our October 2020 issue. When used with my 118, I liked the dimensionality, solid low end, and overall improved depth that the Amp 700 brings to the table. While I've tried almost every Amphion offering over the past seven years with the exception of the 112, I'm excited to revisit the entire line side by side. To do that, I'm here at Plastic Dog Recording in Los Angeles, California. Plastic Dog is owned by Colin Liebick, who is also the US representative for Amphion. It was great revisiting the Amphion lineup and comparing them side by side. Each model retains a great familial consistency in the mid and upper frequencies. And with each model, if you shut your eyes when mixing and point to where you think the sound is coming from, you will most likely be pointing wider than where the speaker is sitting. In the two models, the 218 puts out a large, full, wide sound. Moving to the 215, the image firms up, and as mentioned, it's tight and punchy. The 118 is still my favorite of the single bass driver models. The sound relaxes, and to me, they just sound right. If you can nail a mix on the 118, it should translate well to the real world. Hearing the 115 again was a nice surprise. The top end and mid image of the 118 remains, while the low end firms up nicely with a great focused punch. Plus, you should be impressed by the levels they can handle. The 112 was my biggest surprise. I had never heard these before, and I agree with our previous reviewer. They image great and put out a very respectable low end and volume for their size. I think these would pair great with Amphion's multi-channel amp in a spatial audio setup. Moving to the bass systems, simply put, they change the game. The big thing to know is the low end they add is clean and dynamic compared to many subwoofers which are just muddy and thuddy. They add a sophisticated fullness and a depth that opens up the tone of the two-way speakers and can form the basis of any high-end mixing or mastering system. I'd like to thank Colin and Plastic Dog Recording for inviting me out to get reacquainted with the Amphion line. If you'd like to learn more about any of the Amphion models that you've seen in this video, be sure to check out Amphion.com for more. Also, check out my Family of Amphion Monitors Compared Roundup in our November 2022 issue of Recording Magazine. If you liked this review, be sure to give us a thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to Recording's YouTube channel for further video reviews product comparisons, and more. Also, be sure to stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication now in its 36th year.